Hello, my name is Kostas Jalitakis. I work as the technical artist teacher at the Game Assembly in Malmo, Sweden. This video is a part of the video series called Getting Started with Shader FX for Maya. And in this video, I'll show you how to uh, add user parameters to a Shader FX shader. For the purpose of this video, I'll stick to using the default shader you get when you create a new Shader FX shader, that is the traditional game surface shader. And as you can see, it has a lot of different inputs but there's hardly any input connected already. There's just this default color one going to diffuse color. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you need to, of course, decide on which of these inputs am I going to use. So let's say, for instance, that I want to start using textures instead of the, the color-based solid color or uniform color for a diffuse color. So I'll search for texture and map. And I think I'll stick to having the shader FX window maximized and for that reason to be able to uh, get to the node properties, I want to open the settings and property panel so that I can access these parameters directly in the shader FX window. So um, I'll just move this one to the side. I think I'll want to use it later on, but for now I'll just grab this one and replace the diffuse color with this one. I can at this point start editing these parameters here to set it up so it looks proper and nice in the, the UI for the user. Currently, just to showcase, if I were to, um, you'll need to, if you have the shader FX window, you'll need to click here in the void or in the empty space so you don't have anything selected. That will show you the same type of interface in the attribute editor, which the user would get if they close this window and just go to your shader FX tab. So currently I have nothing exposed, not under the settings. You have these default ones, but there's nothing else. So if I hit open shader FX again, if I now go to my texture map, the first thing you'll want to do if you want to have it exposed is just hitting this one. If I do that, I can then, I don't have to close this window all the time, I can just settle for not having anything selected and look out here. You'll see that at least I have something now, right? I have texture map 1260 or 1260, right? That is, I think there's a way to show this actually, but you can, you can show the node ID here. So that is this texture map, that name. Um, but that's not going to help us at much by having that name, right? So for a texture map node, uh, you can set the unique name. And this is the name which is going to be shown in the interface. So I might call this one color texture, for instance. Color map or whatever you prefer. And now if I look here, you have color texture. There's also the possibility to set um, UI group and UI order. So once we start adding a few different texture maps and different parameters, you might realize when you look here that they're not in the order you would want them to be. So one way to handle that is, let's, let's for the sake of showing this, let's add a secondary texture. Let's go for the specular color, for instance. I'll go ahead and set this one to be named specular texture. Specular texture. And if we have a look now, you'll see that I have both of these. Let's say that I wanted specular texture to be first and then color texture. One way to, to force that is to change the UI order. If you think of this as an as a index value, which is growing, so the very first parameter should be labeled zero in the UI order, this one one, two, three, etc. In that case, I could keep the specular texture at zero and set this one to be one, which would mean that specular texture is now in front or first than color texture. It's just a wild guess from my side, but I think if they are on the same UI order, it's going to go in an alphabetical order. Another thing you can do is you can, as I mentioned, you can add the UI group. Uh, so let's say that I want to, as soon as I start getting a lot of these parameters, you might want to organize them, structure them in some manner, because it might end up being a long, long list. So what you could do at that point is start using the UI group. So I could say that this one, the color texture, should be a part of a UI group called textures. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that this color texture is now organized under another one of these collapsible and expandable uh, categories called textures. And it would be logical to put my specular texture under textures as well, right? So specular texture could also, in that case, resign under textures, for instance. Like so. 
Right. So what else would we want? Let's uh, let's showcase yet another texture, for instance. But in this case, let's go for a normal map. Now the normal map differs a bit from the regular texture map. It has its own node called normal map. There's a lot of similarities, but there are some key differences. And to be able to show this, I'll have to enter the advanced mode. And as soon as I do, this uh, button to be able to show the inside of the group appears. So if I click that button to enter the normal map, we can actually have a look inside the texture to, to have a look-see. And if I'm not mistaken, the only difference between what's going on inside the normal map compared to the regular texture map is this, the very last group, which is the normal space conversion. What that means is it's going to grab your, I think it's your tangent space normal map and convert that into world space normals. So if you have a look here and you, you follow what's going on here, you'll see that they're, they're actually converting your tangent space normal into world space normals. So by the time you're here, this is now world space normals. So you would plug that one into normal, right? And um, the normal map, you want to give that a proper name as well. So normal texture or map. If you want to follow my convention, I'll go for texture. Uh, this one should be in UI group uh, textures, right? And for the sake of just uh, diversifying and having a few different UI groups, let's say that I want to use the normal height value as well. Normal height is a value which allows you to tweak, pretty much set the intensity or strength of the normal map. So in order to drive that value, um, I would have to create, if you have a look, you'll see that this accepts a float input. You would also know because it's a green uh, circle. So if I write float and I plug this in here, I can now hit expose as material input on the float node itself. Now the float node will differ a bit compared to the textures because the name which is um, shown in the, the UI interface for the user is actually the parameter called name as opposed to the textures where name is not displayed but rather the unique name. So with this one, I would call this one normal strength, for instance, or normal height if you prefer. However, I could put this in another group because it's not a texture per se, right? Although I could, I, it's not it's still logical if you put it in the textures UI group as it's a, a property which goes along with its specific texture. But let's say that we put this in a category called tweakables. And if we have a look now, you'll see that we have these input parameters. And I forgot to expose the normal map itself. So I need to hit, I need to select the normal map and click here. So now I've got color texture, specular texture, normal texture, and normal strength with a default value at one. Right. Um, I think that would be fine. Uh, we could just for the sake of it, add another float. And this float, I could actually go ahead and copy from here to save uh, me a few extra clicks of exposing and UI group and whatnot. And I'll plug this into specular power, for instance. Now, this would want to be renamed to specular power. Or if you wanted to, you could call it spread. Uh, I, I might actually go with spread since it's more uh, indicative of what it actually does. An artist uh, who would use this in the end might not be familiar with what they mean by the term power and spread might be more clear to them what it's actually going to end up doing. So let's let's call it specular spread. Or specular width would also be more descriptive if you ask me. So, um, yep, I'm good with that. Uh, one, uh, one last thing I want to show you, or actually two, two things I want to mention. The float 2 float 3 and float 4, uh, as far as I remember, do not have the expose parameter. So the float has expose, but these do not, which is a bit sad. But the workaround is to, if you wanted to have a float 3 or a float 2 and expose it, you would have to create, let's say we're, we want to have a float 2, you would have to click create two floats, sadly, and then use a vector construct. To construct them together and then you could expose these floats individually so um, this one could be i don't know u chord for instance u chord and this one could be b chord if it's a uv coordinates for instance
and then you would expose both of these like so and this one would then plug into say a UP input. If I did that I would now have U chord and V chord and together these two floats are actually combined into a float 2. So that's the workaround I, I'm aware of. I, um, I do not need to do that right now. So uh, that was one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, it's a bit more advanced but it's still something which falls under the category of uh, exposing to the user. There's a node called path direction and specifically path direction list, which I wanted to show. So let's say that we want this shader to have a, a different mode where I can, um, where I can, instead of setting texture maps, I can actually use these uh, solid or uniform colors instead, like constant colors. So one way of going about doing that, let's let's try it out, see if it works. Um, I would want to, well, let's settle for just changing the diffuse color, for instance. I would choose, uh, first I would decide how do I want to phrase that question uh, or that parameter. It'll show up as a setting and I might call the settings use um, constant color, for instance, or use uniform color, use constant color. In that case, the, the, the true option would be, or actually, well, I, yeah, might not matter that much to be honest, but let's go ahead. We plug in the different options. So let's go for the constant color first, for instance, and then the texture based color. Then I could go ahead and plug this in here, and there's now two selectable options. The cool thing is you can now name these options, and you do that in this names input, and that one accepts a string value. The V indicates this. Also note that these are squares instead of round shapes. Squares means that it, it will accept multiple inputs. So you see that in this case, both of these are going into the same one. And you get a number here to indicate which index number they have. Uh, as opposed to the round ones, which will only accept one input. So as I mentioned, we now want to pair string names to these different options. So I will search for string, string value. Right, since it's a string and it has the V. So if I connect this one, this one, it says zero, will be paired with this one. So these two go together. And I now want to name this option. So um, I will call this constant color. And I can copy this one to add another one. I just hit Control C, Control V to duplicate it. I mentioned before, but don't use Control X. It'll close the entire Shader FX interface. If you do, hit Control Z, and you should be good. So Control C and Control V is fine in this interface, not Control X. I plug this in here, so that means that these two are paired together and these two are paired together. So this one will be called Texture Color, for instance. And lastly, I will want to expose this option itself, expose as setting. And you would need to name it something, oh, no, you don't need to, but I would want to, and I would call this color input, for instance. If I have a look in my UI right now, and I exp expand the settings, you will see that I now have a color input, and I can choose between a constant color or a texture color. I think we forgot about one thing. If you have a look, when I choose texture color, the cost color texture appears. But if I choose constant color, the constant one doesn't appear, and that's because we haven't exposed it yet. So if I select this one and I expose it as a material input, and I could call this color constant, for instance, or constant color, color constant, as opposed to color texture. So if I try again, uh, with constant color, I now have a color constant. And if I go for texture color, I now have a color texture color. So um, the other ones that you see listed here are a part of the traditional game surface shader action. So if you were to create a new shader from scratch, you wouldn't have all of these. You would only, it will be blank until you add one of these path direction lists to be able to change different settings. So that's it uh, for adding user parameters to a shader FX shader.